Hey everyone, Missouri here uh, with a video on the Roads of Avalon feature that is set to launch uh, for Albion on August 12th. Uh, I wanted to share some of the information I got while exploring on the test server. Very excited for this feature. Uh, and without anything more, let's just go ahead and get into it. So the first thing I noticed about this new feature is how easily accessible it was. The locations to get to the roads were located on your mini-map. Some tiles didn't have any, but I found one tile with six of them, so they're pretty readily available for any player that's looking to find and get into them. So once you find a portal, you can hover your mouse over it to find some information about the portal. It'll tell you where it goes, how long till it closes, and how many people can pass through this particular portal. Now the player limitations on these portals are actually unique to each side that you go through. So when I enter here, I'm expending a charge on that side of the portal, but you'll notice inside it still shows that the portal is full. You'll also notice that at the bottom there is a, a free use timer. That indicates that I can freely transit this portal for the next 9 minutes and 40 seconds without expending any charges. So for those players who are concerned that they're going to enter a portal and meet a blob of 100 players on the other side, it's simply not a concern. Once you enter, you can freely go back and forth regardless of limitation. Now the map is actually pretty useful for giving you information about the portals. Uh, for one, they're color-coded, the green ones are 2-man, the blue ones are 7-man, and the yellow ones are 20-man. Also, you'll notice the outside of the portal is either gray or yellow. If the outside of the portal is yellow, it just indicates that you've transited through that portal personally. Now you can only see this information if you're actually in the tile that you're looking at the map of, so you can't uh, go to the world map and click any place and see if there's a portal there. You have to be on that tile. So one of the big questions that I had was how often do these portals allow two or seven or 20 people through? And that's a little complicated. Some like, I'm gonna try and explain this real simply, but it's probably gonna come out all uh, awful. Um, so each portal recharges at a different rate. So the two man portal recharges every five minutes. Now that's unique to each person that passes through. So if two people pass through at the same time, Five minutes later, both of those spots are going to recharge together. So there'll be two available uh, transits again. Um, same thing with the 20 man and seven man, but the 20 man is a 20 minute timer and the seven man is a 10 minute timer. Um, and yeah, that's just how it works. So now that the portal mechanics are out of the way, I wanted to explain a little bit about what's in the mist. Um, now, once you enter, you'll be on a road. It's got some speed boosts, which are really nice. Um, but other than that, the rest of the area is the wilderness. And you can tell that on the map by the shaded areas along the sides of the road. That's pretty much where the meat and the content is in these areas. So one of the things you're going to find in the wilderness is a chest on the minimap. Now that indicates uh, an area where there are Avalonian mobs and a variety of chests to open. Um, I found some areas with two or three or four chests um, and there were mobs guarding them. You do have to clear the mobs to be able to open the chests. The mobs were um, fairly challenging to an extent as far as open world mobs go. Uh, most of them were telegraphed moves, so they were pretty simple to take care of as long as you didn't take on too many of them. Um, and they were very rewarding as far as fame goes. Now obviously this is test server, so all of it is subject to change. Uh, but this little guy here, this wind wall uh, ground pounding guy, gave me 13,000 fame. So that was quite a bit, um, and I don't know if that's going to be in live, but uh, if so, that's going to be a very rewarding activity for players to run around and, and do. There seemed to be three different difficulties for the chest areas. There were green marked areas for solo players, there were blue marked areas for groups, and then there were also gold marked areas for raid size groups. Uh, the raid size groups I've found to have some pretty massive Avalonian bosses as well. All in all, these areas were pretty fun and engaging to take care of, and quite rewarding as far as the chests go. Uh, as a side note, you'll notice at the bottom there, we now have estimated values on all chests, all containers, our inventory has an estimated value, which honestly is an extremely underrated and amazing feature that they're adding for this patch. Now, another thing I found a ton of while wandering around were gathering hotspots. There were different sizes of hotspot, and uh, honestly, all of them were really nice. There were a ton of mobs to kill that you could gather from, and each of the little hotspots had a ton of resources lining the walls around them. 
And honestly, most of these areas were nice enough to the point where I could see people grouping up to actually go gather together, which to me seems very exciting and, and pretty entertaining to do as far as gathering goes. Uh, this guy here is a T8 uh, aspect boss, which I believe drops T8 resources. Um, so honestly, people may be fighting over these things on a regular basis. Now, one of the features that a lot of players are most excited for with this update is the ability to set up and establish a hideout within the mist. Now, this is one of the features that I am most excited for, but also most concerned about. But I'll get to that in just a minute. Now, these maps are a little bit different than the normal roads that you're going to be running through most of the time. Uh, you'll notice that in this map, there's no road running through it. There is also a hell gate located in it. There's either a 2v2 or a 5v5 gate there. Um, at the top, you'll notice there is a timer indicating when hideouts in that area can be assaulted or you can when you can place a hideout in that area. To find where you can drop these, you'll notice a little dot and kind of like a enlarged area along the road on certain parts there. These are the locations that you can actually put a hideout down. Um, if you travel to those locations, you'll notice there is a crystal there, and you can apparently set up a hideout around that crystal. From what I could tell, these areas had random dungeons in them. They had corrupted dungeons in them. Um, I actually didn't find any corrupted dungeons in any of the normal tiles that I was exploring. I only found them in the livable tiles where you can place hideouts. Now, honestly, my take on all of this content that I've been exploring is this content is, is very well done. Um, honestly, I love the aesthetics of it. The sound design is amazing. Uh, the way it's all set up and established and the whole thing, it is pretty impressive and awesome. Now, having said that, I do have some major concerns about hideout setup in these areas. Um, from my exploration and some other sources from people that have been exploring, there does not seem to be that many tiles that we can set up hideouts in. Uh, from my experience, one in every seven to ten, maybe, were livable tiles. Um, and honestly, as far as I can tell, there may be a little over a hundred tiles total, which doesn't leave that many places for, to, for us to set up. Other than that, though, the good news is the rest of the Roads of Avalon seem perfectly suited for small group play. Uh, the portal mechanics seem pretty hindering to a large group to be able to wander around. And besides pockets of, of places where people might camp, uh, we're honestly probably going to see small groups shine in these areas. I know a lot of people have been waiting to return to the game, or have just been waiting for something good to be added to the game for small group play, and I honestly think this whole area is going to be perfect for people who just like to play with a few friends and don't want to be constantly threatened by blobs of 50 plus people or gankers uh, chasing them around. So honestly, I really am really excited for this new content to be added. But guys, that pretty much concludes uh, everything I wanted to share about the Roads of Avalon feature coming up. This drops on August the 12th, along with Corrupting Dungeons and the new Avalonian weapons. Honestly, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on this content. Um, please leave a comment in the section down below if uh, you think it's going to be great for small groups. If you don't think it's going to work out, I honestly would be very intrigued to see what the general population thinks uh, is going to happen with this new update. Um, but guys, if you like this video, please leave a like on it. Um, I would greatly appreciate it. And if you want to see more of my content, I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Missouri. Uh, mostly North American late night times, but sometimes I'm just on randomly. So guys, if you want to find me, you can find me on there. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you.